So it's a beautiful winter's day, but it's very cold outside, and you've been on the trail pretty much all day, and now you're ready to sit down and make yourself some lunch, or maybe just have a cup of coffee. You reach for your water bottle, which is on the outside of your pack, only to discover that it's frozen solid. Frustrating, right? I have some tips that will keep that from happening. If you're interested, keep watching. So if this has ever happened to you, then there's a good chance you already have strategies to prevent it from happening again. And this video is for people who are looking for some tips to keep it from happening. All right, let's get started. Tip number one, start out with hot water. I know it sounds simple, but it is really just that simple. The hotter the water you start out with in your water bottle, the longer it will take before it reaches the temperature where it starts to freeze. Simple enough, right? Now, we can add that tip to the rest of the tips I'm going to share with you as well. Tip number two, start out with an insulated water bottle. Some type of a vacuum sealed water bottle really does go a long way to prevent your water from freezing. So one example is a water bottle that I reviewed recently, and this is from Super Sparrow. It is a high quality vacuum sealed water bottle, and it does keep water hotter much longer. But sometimes you don't have one like this, or maybe you want to do even more to keep it from um, freezing. So tip number three is use some type of an insulated sleeve or insulation around the outside of your water bottle. Now I have a couple of commercially available ones that I want to share with you, but you can also make these at home yourself. So the commercially available ones, this is one from Outdoor Research. It's, it's sold just for that purpose and it's intended for use with a Nalgene bottle. So you'd fill your Nalgene bottle, put the Nalgene bottle down inside, zipper it shut, and this this is really intended to be somewhere on the outside of your pack for easy access, but I'm going to suggest another way of carrying this in as well. The other thing I'll suggest when using some type of a cozy or, or insulated carrier like this is not to put your water bottle straight in with the lid up. And the reason is, is as the water cools off in your water bottle, wherever the air gap is, presumably at the top of your bottle, that's where the water will start to freeze. And that's where you don't want the ice is at the top of your bottle. The trick is simple enough, invert it. Now the air gap is at the bottom, which is now the top, of course, and that's where the ice will start when the water starts to freeze. But if you combine that with putting it inside of your cozy or your sleeve or insulated sleeve, then if it does get still get down to the freezing point, at least the ice won't be at the top and make it hard to pour out. So like I said, this is just one of a couple of commercial uh, carriers that I have. The other one is right here, and this is by the Swiss company SIG. Now, this one is works very much the same, but it is intended for a different size water bottle. It won't fit the Nalgene, but it will fit the SIG water bottles. But I have found that it does work fairly well with, this is a clean canteen, 750 milliliter bottle, so this will work quite well. You just drawstring it shut, and you're good to go. Again, you can get that much more time out of the water if you invert it and put it in upside down. So those are two commercial ones, but what about homemade ones? Well, here is one that is quite common. A lot of people have seen these. This is a homemade water bottle cozy made from Reflectix. I made this one to fit my Nalgene and it fits in just nicely. Of course, once again, I would invert the water bottle if I was carrying it that way. So there's one, another one, and this, this is kind of cool and actually quite accessible. This is for keeping wine chilled. So this is a wine Chiller, chiller neoprene sleeve and I picked this up at one of our thrift stores locally and it just happens to fit the 750 milliliter bottle pretty much perfectly so that will again will go a long way to keeping the water from freezing inside the water bottle and the last one I'll show you is a little combination trick, and this is also help for, for other reasons but that is to take a dry bag like this one maybe some spare clothing that you have, like the shemog, wrap it around the water bottle, and put it all inside of the dry bag and seal it up. Now, there's a couple of reasons I mentioned doing that. Number one is, first, you should have a watertight water bottle so that you don't have to worry about it leaking. But if you follow my next tip, this becomes even more important. So my next tip is, take the water bottle and rather than carrying it on the outside of your pack in one of the sleeves or strapped somewhere to the outside, then actually put it in the center of your pack so that everything in your pack 
provides extra insulation. Now, the risk, of course, is that water can leak out into your pack and ruin things or put, make them unusable at least. So the idea is with a dry bag, if you put everything inside of the dry bag, then you have prevented any leakage that might occur from damaging other items. And this is also important when I give you one more tip of using a hot water bottle in a few moments time. Another tip is to actually carry the water bottle close to your body. So this is a shoulder strap carrier that I have, which does have a little bit of padding in it. Uh, I think that's more for protection of the water bottle than it is from keeping it cold, although it wouldn't hurt as well, right? But if you place your water bottle inside the carrier, now carry this over your shoulder, and under your jacket, so it's next to your body, then your body heat is going to keep the water from freezing and it's readily accessible if you want to stop and take a drink along the way. So there is another tip that you can use. Now I mentioned the Cozy being made from Reflectix, but you really can make it from just about anything. At the dollar store, I picked up this very thin sleeping pad. I use this for padding on a lot of different projects, but the material is such that if you want to use the same technique Techniques of taping a cylinder and a bottom on like I did here with duct tape, then you can make your cozy out of this and it will work very well as well. One more tip that I'll share with you, and uh, I've not needed to do this, but you know, I think if it's really cold outside, then this may be something you want to try. And that is one of these tear open chemical reaction heating pads that you often slip in your pockets or in your socks to keep your hands or feet warm. One of these stuffed in with the water bottle, maybe inside of that dry bag, will also extend the time it will take before freezing. There is another tip that I'll recommend. However, this does rely on there being snow. You can bury your water bottle in snow. The deeper, the better. Snow is 90% air, at least when it first falls, and all that air trapped in the snow provides an excellent insulator. Couple of tips on this. One, make sure you remember where you buried your water bottle. So maybe you want to put a stick in the snow and if it's still snowing, you want to be able to make sure that you can find that spot again when you go to dig it out in the morning or later the same day. Number two, it may not freeze, but it does get very cold inside of the, the water container down to the temperature of the snow, of course, which means is once you dig it out from the hole where you buried it and expose it to the air outside, which can be considered colder, free, uh, the freezing will start to happen very, very quickly. So once you dig it out, be prepared to start using it right away. So that's not a bad tip, but really it requires there to be a lot of snow. And really it's only of any value if you're going to be there any period of time, like overnight. So you could use that tip for keeping your water from freezing overnight. But I've got an even better tip for doing that. And that is it's nighttime. You're getting ready to jump into your sleeping bag boil up a bunch of water, fill your water bottle full to the very top, slide it in some type of an insulated sleeve, maybe it with the schmog and a, or a couple of other things or a sock, put it inside of the dry bag, slide it into your sleeping bag, and it will do two things. One, it'll make it nice and cozy for when you get inside. It will help keep you warm, at least until the temperature of the water equalizes with your body temperature. But come morning, not only will your water not be frozen, but it will be quite warm and ready to make a cup of coffee out of. Now, there is an extra strategy or an extra uh, good benefit from doing that as well. When you go to make your coffee in the morning from the water that you've kept in your sleeping bag, it's all relative, already relatively warm. And what that means is if you're using alcohol or gas, It'll take a shorter period of time before your coffee is ready and it will save a considerable amount of fuel. And that's no small thing as well. Not as big a thing, of course, if you're getting up to make a fire and you're gonna do it that way, which is always nice. But first cup of coffee, I, I tend to like to just go for the gas and, and make the coffee and then get up and start moving around and build my fire after that. All right. This was intended to be a short video full of a variety of tips that you can combine together to keep your water from freezing. I would invite you now, if you have any tips of your own that you want to share with the community, then please do so. And if you have any questions, put all of that in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.